I think hand planes are a part of every woodworker's journey, mostly in the beginning because you can't afford a bunch of big tools like a big jointer, and so maybe you get a big long plane like this. You can't afford a planer, so you're flattening by hand. But as you grow as a woodworker, I think you learn that hand planes can be very useful. The problem I think that a lot of people have is they don't set them up correctly uh, or they make some very common mistakes that make them not fun to use and you get tear out. For me, I reach for hand planes all the time. A block plane, a number four, a jack plane, a number 62. I find them very useful to get out of jams, complete small tasks that would take a long time to set up a power tool or I have to you know, set up a bunch of stuff and measure off a fence and put on all my safety gear where I can just grab a hand plane and get to work and get it done really quickly. And so when you get confidence in your hand plane, they've really become a joy to use. So I wanted to share my 11 favorite tips and tricks for getting the most out of your hand plane that will really help you if you're a beginner or any skill level in woodworking. I think these are some common things that a lot of people get wrong, I'd like to show you today. All right, we're gonna try and bang these out in order from setup to use. Not a lot of fluff, we're gonna just try and keep it to the tips and tricks. Number one, above all else, is sharpness. Your blade should shave paper or your arm hair, but here's the caveat. We just did our last video, the most comprehensive sharpening test ever done. Uh, we tested what kind of systems you should sharpen with and what's the best way to sharpen. Now, here's the thing about hand planes. Once you get it paper shaving or arm hair shaving sharp, it's going to degrade below that very quickly, maybe 10 strokes with your hand plane, but then it's gonna rest at that level for the next 150, 200 strokes. So you want to strop about every 150 to 200 strokes, and that's gonna be 30 poles with your angle just slightly elevated, and then 30 poles on the back and get back to work. Why is this important? Because if you're not sharp, it's not gonna cut wood, and no matter how well you've set up your plane, nothing else matters. All right, so let's come into the bench and talk about how to set it up. There's two basic types of hand planes. It's bevel up and bevel down. Now, bevel down usually has a chip breaker. Bevel up does not. And it's important to set that up correctly. And actually, cool little tip, when you get a hand plane, usually this screw is over tightened on purpose so it doesn't move around during shipping. So when you first get a hand plane, you wanna back that off half a turn. This is your chip breaker and blade setup. Now, typically, these lever caps are designed to be able to loosen this screw here. So you can do it like that. You wanna pull your chip breaker towards you when you're taking it off to sharpen so you don't scratch your blade. Take it off just like that. Put it back on. Now, this is really important here. Your chip breaker, you wanna be at least a 32nd from the edge. You can go between a 64th and a 32nd, and let me show you what that looks like. So that should be about that distance there. And you're gonna just tighten that up. Now, why does this matter? Well, if your chip breaker is too close, you're gonna get an accordion effect. If it's too far away, you're gonna get more tear out. The reason you have a chip breaker is it's designed to pull the shaving up and away from the blade so you can continue to cut. Now, if your chip breaker is too far away, that could be one of the reasons you're getting tear out, but if it's too close, it's gonna look like this. It's a lot harder to push through and you get this accordion effect. You don't get those rotating curls and the wood itself will be all bunched up in little accordions like this. All right, so now let's talk about lateral adjustment and that's how we get the blade square to the body of the plane. Now I've taken the guts out of this number four so you can see it and it's a little counterintuitive. So let me show you, I've set this one sort of extreme. I'm gonna take a cut here and you can see it's only cutting on this side of the board. So that means this side of the plane is too low. So you're actually gonna move your lateral adjustment towards the side that is too low. You can see that's on a cam there. So it's going to lower the plane blade on the right when you move it away from it. So when you move it towards the left, the right is gonna go lower. This little circle here fits into the blade and that's what adjusts it left and right. So it looks like this when it gets adjusted. I'm gonna move this lever here. You'll be able to see it through this gap in the plane here. You can see it lifts the left side of the blade up when I move towards the left and lowers the right side. So now, the, how do we test this? I'm gonna show you another method here in a second by sight. So I've adjusted it to about the middle here. We're gonna go until we feel wood without, we're not gonna cut through. So just gonna adjust slightly until we feel wood. And there we go. Then I'm gonna take a cut on the left. We still have a pretty heavy cut there, and then we're gonna take a cut on the right. And I just use my finger as a guide to keep the plane from wandering over the right side. I still have no cut over there, so I'm gonna take this lever, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more here, and then we're gonna do the, we're gonna repeat that process. Here we go, we're just getting a little bit there on the left, that's real good news. 
and just a little tiny bit on the right. You see that? So those are very equal. So we know that we are equal. I'm gonna advance the plane a little bit and take a cut right down the middle. There we go. And because when you sharpen, you have a slight camber on your blade, the middle is gonna cut before the edges. So we know that we are dead nuts there. And we can just advance the plane blade until we get to our final cutting depth and take a few passes here. And there we go, we're getting full length, equal shavings. And look at that beauty right there. All right, now let's talk about lateral adjustment on a bevel up plane. All right, now these are all bevel up or low angle planes. Typically your bed angle is about 12 degrees, whereas your bed angle on a standard frog is gonna be about 45 degrees. The lower the angle, the better at end grain and smooth straight grain wood they're gonna be. The higher the angle, the better it's gonna be at figured wood. This is a number 62 jack plane. This is a number four smoother. This is a rabbiting block plane and a block plane. Now, the one thing that these all have in common is they do not have a lateral adjustment. And you can see at, with this rabbiting plane that it is very adjustable. And so it's a lot tougher to get these square. Now, nice planes like these have very square bodies. Some of them will have like a little guide in there, but still, if you look at this number 62, the square guide in it, it leaves room for adjustment. And so I like to do it like the old Japanese carpenters. Uh, they use something, this is actually a 200 year old Japanese plane setter's mallet. I don't know if it's 200 years old. It's very old, it's very antique. And the way they adjust the blade is they'll hit one side of the plane and that adjusts the blade. So you can do the same thing here, but I don't like to hit my cast iron with a steel mallet. So I use the Cat's Moses mallet, which we sell over at camtools.com. It's got brass heads and then also non-marking nylon heads. And you can take the nylon heads and just give it a little tap. And it's the same thing as the other adjustment, which is the side you hit it on is gonna go lower. And you can give it small taps here. You can watch this blade move just like that. So you would normally hit it a lot softer. Just give it a couple taps until you get it square. The way to adjust it's gonna be the same, which is going on the right side of the board and the left side of the board and giving it slight taps to adjust it. You can also adjust it with your fingers like this, but that has about as much accuracy as a blind guy at a urinal. One of these planes also have in common is a lot of them have adjustable mounds. Now that is something that is gonna help with the smoother planes with tear out. The Standard angle planes also have something that can close the mouth, but it's a little bit more of an adjustment process. What this is for here, you can see this open and closes the mouth. When you wanna take a bigger, heavier pass with one of these, you would open the mouth, and then when you wanna take much finer cuts, you would close it up. Uh, and again, you wanna be very, very close to that. It really helps with tear out. That's why these planes are called smoothing planes. Now with a standard angle plane, you have these screws back here. These screws are designed to remove the frog and also adjust it forward. So you can loosen these and then adjust this screw here and it's gonna move your whole frog forward. And that's going to close this mouth up some. If you wanna set up your number four as a smoothing plane, you can adjust it so that the plane blade is much closer to the mouth. But again, if you're wanting something with a very tight mouth, it's easier to go with a low angle plane of some kind, uh, unless you have very figured wood, which is why you would do this with a standard angle. I think companies like Lee Nielsen will sell a frog that has even a higher angle, 50 degrees, I believe. I think they may even have a 55 angle plane. And what that does is it changes the angle of attack. And if you think about it, the more of a severing cut it creates because you are coming straight at the material. And so when you think about a knife, you're never gonna get tear out if you're cutting straight through at 90 degrees, but that also wouldn't allow you any forward momentum. And so the steeper your angle, the less tear out you're gonna get, the more difficult it is gonna be to push it through the wood. But again, if it's very, very figured wood, that can be very beneficial to raise your angle way up. Lastly, a way that people like to adjust their hand plane is you look down the center of it and you watch the plane blade come up. Think about a ship on the horizon. You know when you look out in the ocean, you could just see a ship out there and you just start to see the top of it. You want to adjust your plane and watch how it comes out. And you want it all to emerge at the same time. So you take it and you slowly advance it. And then if you see one side come out more than the other, you're gonna move the lateral adjustment away from that side 
until everything comes out at once from your plane blade. A little bit easier, but it takes a little bit more skill and practice to do than just checking it on a board. All right, next one is going with the grain. Now you can see this board. I know that this was the top of the tree and that was the bottom of the tree because it's growing up and out here. Or I guess if this was a branch, this was towards the trunk of the tree and that was further out. Now, when you look at this, you can see these grain lines, they go off the board like this. Same on both the bottom and the top. And so you wanna treat this like petting a cat, right? Like you would never go this way up the back of a cat towards the head, because that might piss it off and you're gonna get the sharp bits. So you wanna pet the cat from head to tail. Along the fur, you keep the fur down. Same thing with a hand plane. You wanna go with the grain, not against it. Not to say that there aren't times when you would have to go against the grain or times when the grain doesn't all go the same direction. And that would be highly figured wood. By going with a higher angle plane, you're gonna have a better chance of reducing tear out, ensuring your blade is sharp. And if you're having a problem, closing the mouth of an adjustable plane or moving the frog forward is gonna help you with tear out. The next one I, is what I think to be one of the most important ones behind sharpening. This is a Paul Sellers style rag in an old can with some three in one oil. This is paste wax. I think Rob Cosman usually uses a candle, but nothing makes more of a difference in the quality of your planing and your arms fatigue and all those things than just taking a little wax and waxing the bottom of your planes. Now this is also great because it keeps them from rusting. I am bad about this. I need to do it more often because, you know, sometimes I'll go a while without using my planes and we have a change in season or humidity here and then I'll get a lot of, you know, little rust spots that I have to take off with a lapping plate or something like that. So make sure you're doing it regularly and certainly, uh, you know, when you go to plane, nothing wrong with just giving a little wipe with some paste wax because it makes planing just so much easier. I mean, it cuts down on resistance massively. Now that we've got the setup, so there's a lot of intricacies to that we can get into use. Now, one of the big ones too, when we talk about waxing our plane and ease of use, it's using your body. If you are planing and you are using your arms, you are going to get exhausted quickly. It's much like any swinging sport. Baseball, you know, you step with your legs, golf, same thing, throwing, you're pushing off your back foot. Same thing with hand planing, which is you're gonna use your whole body to create momentum. So you're gonna use your whole body and follow through just like that. It's nice and easy. Finish with your arms here. But that's gonna make planing a lot more enjoyable, make it a lot less exhausting to do. All right, the next tip is about pressure and keeping the pressure in the right place. Now stay with me here because we're about to talk about a couple of real good ones. You wanna keep pressure on the front of the plane, but you should not be just like leaning into it. You want the tool to do the work. So you just keep your pressure on the front part of the plane and you just push with the backhand. But again, you're using your whole body. Just like that, real easy. Just a little bit of weight on the front and pushing through your cut. Now, here's the thing that I bet a few of you run into. You're checking your straightness of your board, for example. A good way to do that if you have a long plane is to use the edge and look for light down the middle. Uh, you can absolutely do that with smaller planes as well. You can kind of go through and look, but uh, it's good to have like a good straight edge that you trust. So have you ever noticed that when you're planing and you've got a straight board, you get a hump in the middle. Now, I'm not exactly sure why that is. I have a theory, which is, you know, your plane blade is obviously lower than the sole of your plane. And so you have pressure on the front of your board. Your board is at one height. And then as you start to exit the cut, the board is obviously at a lower height. And so your plane starts to tilt very microscopically. Obviously, it's just a tiny bit. But then when you come off, it just starts to create a hump in the middle. So a very easy way to do that, uh, I think this is a Rob Cosman tip, is take a pencil, draw a little bit on your board, take some out of the middle, take just a few strokes, and then plane your board all the way through. Another way I've seen done it that I really like is just to start at the end. So you just work your way back until you get nice, even shavings all the way across your board that look like, that's not gonna work. Oh, let's try this guy. Nice even shavings all the way across your board that look like that. The last one is a simple one, but it's about skewing the plane as you cut. So that means turning it sideways. Sometimes this skewing of the plane can help get through some figured wood or stuff that's turning out simply by turning, but you have to be careful of a couple things. One, you change the length of your plane. And so the area, if you're trying to get something flat, you have less area to reference off of, so you have less area in which you can get something flat. And then also it does slightly lower the angle of your plane. So if you're trying to do it in something like 
you know, very figured wood and you have a high attack angle like this 45 degree frog and you skew it some, it's gonna lower that plane angle a little bit. You might start getting tear out. So, you know, use it sparingly, or I guess use it wisely, but skewing the plane blade can help you sever some cuts, make it a little bit easier. I think lastly, one of the things I had, wish I had known when I first got started is one, you don't need every plane, and two, you wanna use the right plane for the job. And it's really important to remember that the job is whatever you like to do. It needs to fit your style of woodworking. I think that people have a tendency to watch these videos and wanna go buy everything that you know somebody like me has. And the answer is I don't use 80% of my planes. Like I use a few that I really love. I love my number four. I love my number 62 jack plane. Of course, the jointer is really awesome. When you need to flatten something wider than your jointer. Then of course, my block plane. But you know, when you think about the types of planes that you would use, here's sort of a breakdown. And I'll sort of go through these uh, and tell you what I like to use them for. So there's a scrub plane. A scrub plane is like a little bit bigger plane, maybe a number four, number five, or six with a big open mouth and a camber on the blade that looks like this. And that's for taking massive cuts. If you don't have a planer, you need to dimension something, you would want a scrub plane, sometimes called a four plane. From there, there's jack planes. Now jack planes are, they come in standard angle and low angle. Nowadays, this is a number 62 Lee Nielsen jack plane. They have adjustable mounts. They're called jack planes because they're sort of jacks of all trades. This has always been one of my favorite planes. It's long enough you can sort of joint shorter boards. Uh, it's got a closed mouth so you can do some smoothing and it's low angle so it's really good with end grain, especially when it's really sharp. And then your standard angle planes like this number four or this number seven, those are gonna be good day-to-day -day stuff. They all have their different uses. A uh, number four is my most used plane. When this thing's sharp, nothing beats it. And that's because it's, you know, I can smooth things out. I can grab joinery, but the one thing that it can't do is be used one-handed, and that's where your block plane comes in. This is a plane I think every woodworker should have. I love it for flushing up joinery, flushing up plugs, uh, butterfly keys. It's great for chamfering edges. It just does so much, and I like the low-angled ones with the adjustable mouth because it has a lot of different uses you can do. Again, it's great on end grain, um, which with joinery, when you have two things that meet up, one of those is probably gonna be end grain, or both sides are gonna be end grain, like dovetails or a half-lap joint, those kind of things, so it's really great. Uh, I love this one, this rabbiting block plane. It's great for joinery, again, because it allows you to get right up next to something. It has uh, this little tiny blade called a nicker, N-I-C-K-E-R. Uh, you adjust with a screwdriver, it comes down, and that's gonna sever across grain so that you don't get tear out past where you're trying to cut past the edge. Other than that, just have fun. Make sure your blade is sharp, your sole is waxed, and just go to it. It's one of those skills that makes a huge difference in your woodworking because it's quick. A hand plane is quick to grab. You don't need safety gear. You don't need to have big setups. As long as you have a vise, and a way to do it, it's a great tool to have. So if you found value in this, guys, remember these videos are never sponsored. Every, this whole channel is supported by kmtools.com. Head over there to check out some of my favorite battle-tested tools, including many tools I've developed myself. As always, guys, stay safe in the shop. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.